everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome back to another video. Now I have just finished my 24 karat gold thread um, project. If you haven't seen um, those videos yet, you can check that project out up here. Um, it's been quite an intense few weeks. I was working a technique I don't normally work, which involved a lot of counting. I was using a thread I was unfamiliar with and I had a bit of a deadline to get that project done. So it's been quite an in intense few weeks. So I thought in this video today, we would slow everything right down um, and have a look at some slow stitching. So what is slow stitching? So basically in three words, it's a mindful stitching practice. So when I say mindful, I mean it's about being here and now. It's be about um, being in the moment um, and concentrating on the thing that's in front of you right here and now and not being distracted by external forces um, and just being focused and still and quiet on the thing that's actually in front of you. Ginger Cat is a perfect um, example of that. You can see how mindful he's being at the moment. He's just yeah concentrating on the thing that's right in front of him, not worried about anything else that's going on in his life. Um, so we need to kind of channel channel that energy and that idea, if you like, um, and be more cat-like. So I've tackled mindful embroidery before. We did this project up here. Um, you can check that out up here at the end of this video if you want to see what that one was all about. But slow stitching is a little bit different in that we aren't worrying about the end product. That was actually a kit that I did. It was already pre-designed for me. Um, slow stitching isn't about an end product. It's about the process of doing the actual stitching. It's about the feel of the thread and the fabric in your fingers. It's about listening to the noise that the stitches make and not worrying about what's going to come out of it at the end. You just go quite instinctively um, and see what evolves as you go along. So I'm going to show you some actual samples of some slow stitching in a moment, but why might you want to do this? So anybody who's followed my videos for a while or if you've even taken a class with me, you will know that I'm a bit of a planner. I do like to work out what it is I'm doing beforehand, which is OK. That's absolutely fine because I do love that part of the process. And when I tried to do this for the first time, it was um, quite an eye opener, actually. It's not the way I normally work, but I did really, really enjoy it. Um, and I enjoyed seeing what was coming out of it without me knowing beforehand what um, what it was I was going to stitch. So if you're finding yourself a bit stuck creatively, you're always doing the same thing. This is a really good way to spark new ideas. And if you just want something to help you relax, if you've had a hard day at work and you just want to come home and you want to do some stitching, but you don't want to think about it too much, again, have a look at some slow stitching because it might be just the thing for you. So when I looked up samples of slow stitching on the internet, there was a huge um, array of different styles and different techniques going on. So something from very, very simple, a um, few pieces of fabrics together with just some simple stitches running through it, right up to really complex constructions um, with lots of different stitches going on. The very act of slow stitching, though, means that certain techniques are better for it than other techniques. And the more I looked at these different pieces, the more I could see some similar techniques coming through them. There's kind of a vein of techniques that were running through all these slow stitching projects. And it was quite nice to see that they have their roots in some very traditional um, embroidery techniques. So I thought we would look at those first before we have a look at how to start your own piece. So the first one that appears quite a lot, which you will probably um, be quite familiar with, even if you've never done it yourself, is quilting. So quilting is the process of taking something large out of some smaller pieces of fabric, layering them together and piecing them together, stitching through them with some backing on it to make a quilt or a blanket um, and using the simple stitches to sew those pieces of fabric together. So another technique that was coming through a lot is a Japanese technique called sashiko. And I've actually got some. I can show you that here if I can pull it out from underneath Tunjika. So sashiko is a Japanese technique, as I've mentioned, where they would use old pieces of fabric and they would layer them up and they would repair old clothes with patches over the top and they would repair the holes and cover the holes with a um, piece of fabric and they would stitch through all of those layers of fabric just with a simple running stitch um, to hold them together and to make new fabrics. So these are a little sample of those. So what they would do is when the, their clothes had really worn out and they got these little pieces left they couldn't use anymore, they would sew them together and work these running stitches all the way through and make these little cleaning cloths. So these are called zokin, and um, 
they would use them to, to clean things with and um, they look rather beautiful to, for that <laughs> in my eyes but this is what they are so it's just a couple of layers of fabric I've got a different one on the back and I've just run, worked a running stitch all the way through these to hold the fabric together and it's as simple as that really I put a little patch on it just to make it look a little bit nicer and another one on the back like so um, and just creating something new out of something old that's worn out and you can't use anymore Got another one here so different decorative fabric on this side they use these colors that um, are interesting very traditional in this form of embroidery the dark fabric was indigo dyed because they weren't allowed to wear bright colors these have been worked by farming communities and they used an undyed thread for um, economics really so that was the white threads which is why you get these blue and white colors and for this one i just followed the shapes of the patterns in the fabric did some swirls on the back that's come out in a pattern so you can see how it starts to get decorative and how you can start to change something to create something new so the same technique also appears in other countries so in india you might know this technique as camphor embroidery and they would do the same process and um, they would take some old saris and old fabrics and they would cut them up and they would layer them and they would create blankets um, and clothing and um, I've got a picture of one here thank you very much to Gautam for sending these to me um, Gautam was my guide in India and um, he's got an amazing collection of textiles if you want to see some more of his textiles then you can do that in this video up here he um, very kindly brought some over and we made a really good video on that so do check that one out um, but this is one that he sent me. This, this is a piece of clothing and you can see those colours coming in again, that dark blue and those white stitches. So you can see the influences and how they, they cross over in different cultures um, and making very simple stitches. This one's got running stitches all the way down it, but it's also got some darning stitches as well. So starting to bring in some different kinds of stitches, still simple stitches, but just to make it a little bit more decorative. There's another piece of the camphor work here. So this is a small bag. So when the pieces get too worn out to make something big with, to make some clothing or a quilt or a blanket, you can make something smaller with it. So this is a little bag um, that's been made in the same technique. And again, you can see the running stitches and the influence in that piece there. The origins of all these techniques really lie in more rural communities where people are making their fabrics and their garments last longer by repairing and mending. So it really is a very thrifty kind of embroidery technique and we're going to keep that in mind um, when I show you how to start your own piece. Okay, so let's actually have a look at some slow stitching. So this is the first sort of proper piece that I had to go at um, after my Japanese cleaning cloths because those are very simple and this one developed those a little bit more. So I'm going to show you that one. And I've hung it on a little stick. <laughs> um, I have to confess that um, my friend Jane, who um, I'll mention again later as well, because she's done a little sample of this, gave me this idea. She showed me a video in it and somebody done it and I thought, oh, that's brilliant. Really just a nice way to show off what it is you're making. Um, so I hung it on a stick that I found in the garden. So she would probably think that's quite amusing. Um, but just to show that you can just carry on with this process. You don't just have to stop when you've done the stitching. You can think, oh, you know, what can I do with it now? How can I be even more creative with it? Um, so that is one way to do it. So I'm going to show you that in a little bit more detail. So let me just walk you through this and tell you what I've done. So I've got a backing felt here. I did find that it was useful to have something to stitch onto. So either a couple of layers of fabric like the cleaning cloths or just a piece of felt just to make it a little bit more sturdy. So you'll notice with this that I've actually stitched this in my hand. It hasn't gone in an embroidery frame. I've just made this square and I've stitched it in my hand um, on, on a table is, is helpful. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but as soon as you put something in a frame, you're adding some tension to it, not just physically, but a bit mentally as well. Because as soon as you tension that fabric, then you've got other things to think about, keeping it tight. You're restricted by the size of the, the frame as well, and you can't go beyond that. So this is a nice technique to work freehand and just in your hands without a frame. Obviously, if you have any mobility issues or any pains or any arthritis or anything like that, and you need to use a frame, then do, um, because you're not going to be very mindful if, if you're in, in pain. So use one if you want to, but this is a good technique to ditch the frame and to just do it in your hand. So I've got my felt backing and then I've just found a few fabrics that I had. Now these are actually samples that I dyed, um, had to go hand dyeing with. So this is an onion skin dyed one. This one's got a little bit of iron um rusty nails basically on it 
Um, this one I think might have been a poppy or something, I'm not quite sure now. So these were just little samples that I had that I dyed that I'd got left over that I didn't really know what to do with. So this is where we're using things that we've already got. You don't need to go and buy materials to do this. Just have a route around and see what you've got. If you're a quilter, this part's going to be no problem to you whatsoever. Um, and just use what you actually have to hand. So I just layered up these small pieces here. You can cut them if you want to and um, to, to fit. And then I just found um, a few threads that I thought would go with it. So I initially started with this red colour because I'd got this little piece of, I'm not really sure what this is, this little kind of rough hessian type fabric and it had got a red stitch running through it. So I thought I'll get a red, um, a red thread and I'll use that um, and throughout my whole piece. So I started with that one, then I added in this second colour, this sort of yellow colour here, and I just started working some stitches across it. Here's my running stitches here and across the bottom here. And I just started to stitch these layers together. Didn't have a plan with what I was doing. Didn't know how it's going to look when it was finished. Um, I just enjoyed the process of laying those stitches and start um, laying those fabrics, sorry, and starting to do some stitches through it. So that really is just where I started. And you can see as it went on, I actually broke away from the straight lines and I put a little spiral in, just a kind of a, a feature bit of stitching as well. So if you know lots of stitches, you don't just have to stick to running stitch. That's a really good basic one to start with, but you can just add all sorts of stitches into this if you wanted to. I've even got some buttonhole down here. I've got a little bit of um, woven running stitch down here as well. So you can add in as many different stitches as you want. I think it might be lunchtime for Ginger Cat. Um, and just keep building it up like that. And then when I'd finished, I did a little handmade button on that I'd found. And I thought, oh, it needs a bit more detail. I put a tassel on. And then along came the little poppy heads that I've just tied on. So you can just keep going and keep going and add on what you want. So I have got another piece that I started that I'm going to show you in a bit, but that one's a little bit more complex. I just want to show you how um, I've developed that first piece um, into the second piece. And also by chance, um, a group of my friends had a little crafty session. Sometimes we get together and we have a go at something. And Sashiko embroidery came up as a suggestion um, and we did that together. And I just want to mention that because it was really good to do that with a group of people because you can get a bit stuck in your own ways and it's good to see what other ideas people are coming up with so I did ask them if I could just take a picture of what it was they were doing and show you that as well so I will show you those also. Okay so let's do some actual slow stitching so you only need two basic ingredients really you need something to stitch on and you need something to stitch with so have a little route around in your stash and pull out some fabrics. Look at all those little bits that are left over that aren't big enough to do some embroidery on or maybe aren't big enough to make your quilt with and pull those out and see what you've got. So I've done that process already. I did have a lot, as we all do when we're, when we're creative, crafty people. Um, so these are the things that I pulled out. So I've just got these little samples again that I did some dyeing on. I've got some leftover dressmaking fabrics. This was my trousers, I think, something like that. But it's got some really beautiful little machine embroidered details on it that I could use. And what else have we got? Some quilting fabrics. If you're a quilter, you've got loads of these lovely, beautiful printed fabrics, I'm sure, lying around. This is an old piece of silk. It's actually got a hole in it, which is quite nice because we can use that because we can mend it. Um, and all sorts of leftover little bits of linens and got some lace in there as well. I'll talk about the lace in a moment. Um, we've got some gold kind of mesh, really pretty printed fabrics. This is actually tie fabric, as in tie that you wear, man's tie. That's actually that fabric, which is really lovely. It'd be nice to get some of that in. Something with a little duck on it. Don't know where that came from, but that could be nice to use. Some more quilting fabrics. And you could also cut motifs out as well. If you've got any fabric like this, you can cut the roses out. You've got a butterfly there, you could cut the butterfly out. So really you can have a lot of fun with this stage. Um, but just pull out what you like. Don't pull out everything, because <laughs> if you're like me, there's tons of it and you could spend all year doing it. So just be instinctive with that. You could even just set yourself maybe a little time. I'm gonna do this for half an hour or something like that um, just so you're being instinctive about it and you're not overthinking it and you're not then starting to plan something else we want to work this out as we go along 
So just pull out some fabrics. Let's put that to one side. And then you'll need some threads. So you've probably got loads of leftover threads as well from projects as well. Don't buy new threads for this. Use what you've already got. These are little ends of um, a Lana set that we've got. And these are ones that I use for my projects or the end of the reel or something like that. And I've just got them all in here. So I'm going to have a little route through there and see what I've got in there that I can use. Then you might want to just think about some embellishments. You don't have to do that at this point. That can come later. But I'm just going to talk about that now. So I've got some really interesting things here. We've got lots of little lace pieces. There's a little bit of tatting there. Just those little kind of leftover pieces you collect that you never know when you might need them. Now is maybe the time. And so some little lace pieces. I've got some metallic gold lace there that has been hanging around for a long time. That would be nice to get that in there. I've got some embellishments as well, some little hand sewn ones that you sew onto your um, onto your embroidery, onto your dress, onto your clothing. So I've got a couple of those. I've got some coins as well. I've got these pieces here that I got from a stitching show that have been cut out of a dress, and but obviously somebody decided they were too nice to throw away, which was good because I can use those as well. Um, and I've got some shells too. You can sew some shells on. You can tie things on if you want to. If you think, oh, I can't sew that on, there's always a way to put it on. Don't worry about that. Um, and you can also use, I'll just move those out of the way, you can use some found objects as well. So I put poppies in that first one that I showed you, the old dried poppy heads. You could put some feathers in there. It's got some honesty, which is really nice. We could just cut that off and use that. Those are quite flat. Could sew over those. Got some dried flowers, um, some funny little leaf things. They're quite hard though, so we'd have to think about how to attach them. But we could make a hole in them, or we could just do some stitches over it. That was actually out of some potpourri that I had. So that sounds quite nice too. So you can just collect really whatever. You can think outside the box for this. You don't just have to think embroidery materials. You can go with um, anything that you can find um, and just get um, a little collection of these things together and we'll use that in um, our first project. So let's start layering some fabrics together. This is the last fun bit. I'm just going to grab what I've got and just start pulling some things out. Now, I found it was a little bit easier if you layer two pieces together. So our Zokin cloths, they're just two pieces of fabric, both decorative, so it looks different on both sides, but you don't have to, you can just do it as if you're working on one side. So just have something for the base as well, I suggest. So I'm going to just, maybe we'll have that decorative one there on the bottom. I'm going to do quite a small one just to show you so we can get some stitching done. So maybe let's have that one on the back. I'm just being quite instinctive about this. You can just have a little play. No right or wrong, which is great. You can do whatever you want to do. And just start layering up some pieces and just go with what you like. Remember that the stitches are going to make some decoration as well, so you haven't got to think about how this is, this is not the finished sort of thing. It's going to have more layers to it. That's quite an interesting fabric. Quite like that. Maybe we'll put that on top. These are fun little things. Can cut some, can cut her out actually. You can just have a play, move things around, take things off, add things on. I tend to like more simple things than more complicated things, but you might want to just shove it all on, which is absolutely fine. Just really build up some layers and some patterns. That would look lovely. I've got a little bit of that dressmaking fabric. That might be a nice little detail. Let's cut that off there. The frayed edges can add a nice little texture to it, so don't worry about it all being cut nice and straight and smooth. You can just go with something quite rough, so I quite like that. Turn that around a bit.
can we move that fabric along because I quite like what's going on on here. I like to see a little bit of that. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too long fiddling with it because you don't really want to watch me doing that, but spend as long as you like doing this. This is a nice process. You can feel those fabrics in your fingers um, and they all feel different as well. I've got some thin ones and some slightly rougher ones and some textured ones with the embroidery on it. So just enjoy playing with the fabric and how it feels in your fingers. So when you've got something that you like, we can start pinning it together. Now I'm just going to make it a bit small. I'm going to make it that size. In fact, I'll just pull that to there. I've only got to make one cut, so I'm just going to cut across there. And then around this piece here. I'll just cut that straight across and get rid of all that for another occasion. You wonder why you were saving all those bits of fabric. <laughs> this is why. Not being too careful about this. Okay, so that's my little starting composition. So I'm going to actually pin all those together. You don't need to stitch them down separately. Just pin them all together, make a new piece of fabric out of it, and we're just going to sew right through everything. So just pin sort of everything, maybe at the corner, just make sure every little piece of fabric is held down. Without pinning it to the table. Okay, so you just put as many pins in as you want to to hold it together and I'm just going to pick that up and just show you what I've got. So a nice little composition there. I've got the decorative one on the back and when I stitch through this those stitches will appear on the back and I'll make something different on the back which can be really nice as well. A nice little surprise um, and I can already feel this as being a really nice piece of cloth. It's now got a little bit of weight to it with those fabrics on it. Feeling really lovely. Um, just really nice to work with it in your hands rather than having it in that frame and being a little bit disconnected from what it is that you're making. Okay, so let's choose some threads to go with it. So when you're choosing threads, you could choose something that goes with the colours that you've got in there if you like. So I could pick out maybe a couple of pinks. I've only got what's in my box, so... I'm just going to go with what's there. I'm not going to go and find something new and break into that. I'm going to use what I have. That's quite a nice one. could pick up the colours in this little bit here if I wanted to. I could actually go with a red in there. I've got the dark blue as well. Oh, we've got some really interesting earthy colours in this iron dyed piece of fabric here. We could pick up a few of those. It's quite nice, but I don't have much left of it. That's okay, we can use that up. A nice time to use up those little odds and ends. Quite liking those pinks and browns actually. I might take that red take that red out. Something a bit darker and lighter as well. You might want a little bit of contrast in there just to make the stitches show up, or you might want them to blend in a bit. That's quite a nice, more neutral colour. Just pick a few. Don't go too many. If you've got too many colours, then you've got a lot of decisions to make. So keep it nice and simple, I think. So I might take that one out and the brown out. Which brown should we have? Okay, with that one. <laughs> just be instinctive about it. Don't overthink this process. No right or wrong. Just enjoy choosing. So I've got my base fabrics there. I've got some colours. 
And I'm just going to start by um, working some running stitch, so a really, really simple stitch, and let's um, sew some of those pieces together. So I'm going to start with this quite neutral one, actually, and then I can see how it starts to build up. So I'm just going to cut myself a length of... In my needle. Now, when they do their sashiko embroidery, they do actually start it with a knot. It's called a sashiko knot. Um, so, when in Rome, <laughs> I'm not a fan of knots in things, but I'm just going to start it with a knot. Throw caution to the wind. But I'm going to make a small knot. And I'm going to hide it in the fabrics. So, let's turn this around. I'm going to hide it under there. So I've got three layers here. So I'm just going to go through those two layers, put that knot in, so the knot's hiding between the fabrics. Put it in a little bit. And then I'm just going to start a running stitch through this. Now, what you can do because you're holding it in your hand is you can stitch in a slightly different way. Let's move that pin so I don't stab myself. You can actually do a running stitch with the stitches on the needle. So you can manipulate your fabric so that you can get more than one stitch on the needle. And this is how they do the sashiko. They have long sashiko needles so they can get lots of stitches on. And you can put a few stitches on to do it so you can see it. And then you can pull that through. So you can do this different action of going in and out of the fabric rather than up and down like you would in a frame. Now, because we've hand held, we can do it this way. I want a little bit of a longer stitch on the top than underneath, just so we can see that running stitch really, but don't worry too much about it. Don't worry about it being straight. Don't need to draw any lines or anything like that. I'm just going around this edge so that I can start to sew these pieces of fabric down and sew them together, and that will make me a new piece of fabric. So I'm just going to go all the way along this edge. I've got to not quite the end now, but I'm just going to change direction, I think. Just fancy going this way, just to hold this little bit of fabric in place. Just turned direction, still working that kind of running method where I'm putting lots of stitches on at once. You can bend the fabric so you can do that, take the pins out as you go. can really feel that fabric layers between your fingers. It's really nice, actually. You don't normally have that contact with the fabric when I'm normally stitching. I've got to contact with a thread, but not really with the fabric, so it's quite nice to feel that in your fingers. Up to the end of there. I think I will take it down through the back and come up there. That's the end of the thread, there it is. And let's just go that way across. If you want to just go back and forth and back and forth, like you did in the cleaning cloth, you can do that. You can just do rows up and down if you want to. Anything goes, really. I suppose at the minute I'm just thinking about sewing the fabric together and where do the stitches need to do to be to do that. So if you want a little bit of a guidance, that might be a good way to go. Let's just go across the bottom. Let's head into this middle piece now and get some stitches in there. out of thread I think. Quite good as well for making you loosen up a little bit and keep a nice relaxed tension because as you saw then if I pull it too tight it all scrunches up so quite nice just to help you relax a little bit and then I'm just going to take that onto the back. Can't see much of these stitches at the moment but if I put a different colour in that might do some really nice things on the back. Just going to thread it back and forth 
through the fabric a few times just to finish that off. Cut that off. Okay, so you can sort of see how it's starting to come together as a piece of fabric when you put a few rows in up here, down here and into here. I'm going to keep doing some more of that, so I'm going to probably come across here, maybe right up through the middle of this, get some really dynamic sort of shapes in there, start to tie all this together a little bit and choose maybe a different colour. I might come in with pink, that's going to look quite striking with that. So I'm going to do that in a minute, but before... I get on with that. I just want to show you this other one that I started just to show you something a little bit different and where you can go with this. So you can see this one's quite a bit bigger and I've had quite a lot of fun with this one. So I spent a lot more time choosing my fabrics with this one. This is another piece of dyed fabric that I had. We had a little indigo dyeing session in our little crafty group. Um, and again, some of my samples that I've used in my home dyeing, colour dyeing experiments there. Uh, this is an onion skin one. Here's the iron one again that we just used. A little bit of hessian again in there. That makes quite an interesting texture. This is quite rough. This is silk here, so this is beautiful and delicate and smooth. And this one is quite rough here. We've got something even more delicate here. So here's that little bit of fabric dress sample that I showed you earlier. You can actually see through that, so that's quite nice. You can see what's sort of underneath that. And I played around with these and had a had fun placing them just went really instinctive about this and I didn't feel it was right I just moved it really and again no right or wrong so you can't you can't get this wrong so whatever just pleases you whatever you like the look of I've done it on a piece of calico just to give myself something a bit more sturdy to stitch on these are the colors that I chose so I've got the blue picked out this nice strong blue and the yellow in the silk as well the same colours and again a neutral one if I just want to have some stitches that aren't popping out too much um, and then I went took this to this crafty session I had with my friends hi everyone and it was interesting to see how this changed so um, we all had to go at something um, similar and we had a load of stuff on the table which is interesting to go to someone else's house because they have different things from you and you get a bit bored of looking at the same things that you have and a big pile of lace came out um from somewhere and i thought that would be interesting to put on um, and i found these beautiful little bits of lace here and attach those and suddenly the whole thing changed and then i added another little bit at the middle so even though i'd started and thought i'd pick my threads and was happy stitching I found some other things and some other inspiration from other places as well and I added that in so I think there will be more going on this later so you can just add to it whenever you want to add to it and it'd be really fun maybe to bring in some of these other things this is um, these little dry flowers from the little class that we did and some dry flower arranging this was left over but those colours are rather lovely as well and um, I can pull a few of those out and sew some of those in as well so I think this one has got quite a long way to go and you can see I've started stitching as well so here's the darning stitches and this I don't know if you can see how stiff that sort of become with all the stitching if I just show you on the back you can see that pattern the stitches makes really beautiful on that plain calico on the back. And I just did a lot of stitching over it because this silk is delicate and it had holes in it. You can see how it's actually started to disintegrate. So I put more stitching on it to hold it in place, which goes back to that visible mending technique that I talked about earlier. So that's made that quite chunky, which is nice. And I did the same on this one as well over here. So I've done quite a lot of stitching on this part here and you can see this bit here hasn't been stitched at all yet. In fact, um, there's only pins holding it in place. So it's kind of part work. So this has been quite heavily worked. This is still held together with pins. And I just thought that was really interesting so you could see the process and how it's developing a little bit um, on a bigger piece. I just wanted to show as well what my friends did in the crafty group because it's really nice to get inspiration from other people. So my friend Jane, hi Jane, she did this um, really lovely colour combination here actually with the blues and the reds together and Jane does a lot of paper crafting as well so she kind of had that a little bit in mind I think to make some papers from it as well and, and some book covers and things like that and again did the layering and stitch through it um, and stuck some really interesting things on and that came out really really beautifully. Um, Hazel, hi Hazel, she did something similar as well smaller and, and took one of the motifs from the fabric and you can see that sort of flower design on that piece here and applied that as a kind of really nice feature 
piece, which I thought was lovely, using the patterns in the fabric to help you create your designs. So Heather and Yvonne went for a little bit of um, mending. So Heather did a pair of her jeans that um, were her favourite jeans, but weren't um, weren't very wearable anymore so covered the patch with some fabric and did some darning stitches through it and had a little go at this method as well of layering the fabrics um, and stitching through the fabrics and I really love to see the colours that people choose because it's um it's easy to get stuck in a rut with your colours and always do the same thing so it was really nice to see to see what colours that they picked as well and Yvonne decided to actually do it on some of her clothes and made some holes <laughs> didn't really have some holes in in a in the top that she had and again patched the hole and worked the running stitches through it so um, you can do so much with this technique and once you get going you can do um, really beautiful things with it so thank you to all of you um, for sharing your pieces with me that was a really fun day I enjoyed it a lot um, and I was quite inspired by it as well Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more work on this one, put some more stitches in, try some different colours, um, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. So I've been playing with this for a little while now. It's really enjoyable just to sit here and do this without any planning and any thinking and anything like that. It's quite liberating for me to do this. It's very different from what I normally do. Um, very nice way to spend some time, actually. You easily get lost in the time. It goes, it goes really quickly <laughs> when you're doing this. So I'll just show you what I've done with this one so far. So I worked um, quite a few more running stitches. I've picked out all the colours that I've used and a little bit in each. I've done some just straight ones as well here, just to hold the edges together, really, and brought in the brown at the top and worked a few more over this one. This one is quite delicate because it's got frayed edges so I put a little, few more stitches over that and then I found these lovely little pieces of actually there's a tatting which is a technique you do on a shuttle and you wrap it around your fingers and they're tiny tiny little knots and they make these beautiful lace like effect really really lovely and I found a couple of pieces of that this is tatting also this lovely little like frou frou flower which I thought I'd put on as well. So put a bit of tatting on and the flower, but I'd like to keep going with this. I'm going to do a little bit more. I might add some shells in there as well. Um, that would be nice. You could also put coins in there. Maybe if you had a coin that was special to you or it's got the date on that's important or something like that, that might be nice um, <clears throat> to do. So I might add those in as well. I'm not going to finish it on camera because I want to spend a bit of time on it. It's kind of defeating the idea of the object to try and get it done for a deadline. But I will put some pictures of, of it up on my social media. I'll put it on my Facebook page and my Instagram account as well and on the community page for YouTube. So you can see how it progresses and see where it goes. And I hope this has inspired you to have a go at slow stitching as well. It's really a lovely thing to do um, and a complete maybe change from what you might normally do. So do have a go. Let me know how that goes if you do. And if you want to... Um, Fix something to this, by the way, that doesn't have any holes in. We do have a video over here. Use the she-shirt stitch, <laughs> easy for me to say, and that will show you how you can attach um, an object to your embroidery. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you have, and I will see you next time.